Well, it was a psychological horror thriller, um, primarily with an anti-narrative that has a full-blown revelation at the end. Um, I think it's mainly an art house style film with a twist, like varied through different conventions through the genres that we've woken up. It's very metaphorical yeah. rather than narrative based. Mm. I think in the narrative though, for, for our genre, it's about exploring the identity and the fact that she doesn't know her identity, neither does the audience. So I think with the ending, revealing it at the end, is what ties into the genre of a psychological thriller. That's good. It's, 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 that's I think, good shot it, I think it also like relates to things like mental health and like the effects of media. Cause Katie, there was like in the voice of like being fat and skinny, like reveals people's insecurities and like having mental health, it'll just make it worse. Yeah. Just go back to the point. One of you said it was an art house movie. Tell me a little bit about your target audience in that case. Who is this film? primarily trying to target? People who enjoy individual films compared to mainstream films. Like, say if someone, like, I think I'm just going to refer to what I know here, um, instead of going to see like something like an Iron Man film, they would want to go some, to see something like The Woman in Black, because that was an indie film, but and then like it got so much of an audience, it was put into mainstream, so it's kind of like that original audience, like people who want to see original work. We also thought primarily female rather than uh -huh. male as well. And there's also ABC one that we we're going for, which is more up market sort of people, I suppose. That's good. So people yeah. People who you... have the money to sort of go see a shorter film right, and want to pay for it rather than go and have the ex entire experience of a night out with a bigger film. Like someone who alternative really, just really theatrical probably as well. Something interested in arts and theatre and that kind of metaphorical like a presentation. Initially I had a different audience though, and then we've kind of progressed it with the idea that we had. So. That's really interesting because that will have changed your decisions with what we're about to talk about. Yeah. So let's talk about it. Um, if I go through each of you in turn and I just want you to tell me what two ancillary tasks you made and give me a little bit of um, a, a description really as to the choices you made. So Natalia, we'll begin with you. What, what was your first ancillary task? Uh, I made the poster. Okay, tell me a little bit about your, your poster design is superb. Tell me a little bit about your choices, why um, you chose what you did. Well, it was based on, I, I researched the Black Swan because it was quite a similar narrative to ours. So I mainly liked the close-up and the crack in the face. So I've tried to reflect that in my poster by having a close-up and using a crack of a mirror so it's relative to our film. Um, and it's also kept quite simple, like in terms of colour as well. So, whereas on the black swan we have like mainly blacks and whites with a hint of pink of the lips, mm -hmm. on mine I've done mainly black, white, but a hint of blue from the eyes. So, yeah. What kind of techniques, when you were making the poster, what kind of techniques did you employ in regards to what a poster should do? Does that make sense? Like. What is the purpose of a poster and how did you make sure those conventions were followed? Yeah, well, to attract an audience, well, mainly in the photography, she uses direct mode of address. So to attract the viewer's eye, you're looking into the actor's eye. So, yeah, with it being a close-up as well, that's, that's quite prominent in the poster. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Did you use a tagline? Yeah. Yeah. What is the tagline? Did you did you all use the same tagline? I think we did in the end, didn't we? Who will you see? Who will you see? What will you see? What will you see? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what is the purpose? I mean, I can ask that question to everybody because what is the purpose of the tagline? How does it work? Like you never know who you're gonna see. Like obviously, mental health. Like and bipolar. Who is she gonna see? Her happy self, her angry self, her sad self. Who was she gonna see? And it's kind of like asking people that question. Like who do you see when you look in the mirror? Ultimately, reflects the narrative that we've chosen. Really. I mean, it makes it personal, so that it directly involves them into it straight away. Yeah, especially using a rhetorical question, you're actually inviting that viewer mm. to physically watch it. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I think it works in that way, because it, it's asking a question where you want the answer, don't you? I think it's a really, really clever tagline for that reason. Um, tell me about your second ancillary task. You did the magazine article, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, totally. Tell me which magazine you wrote, um, wrote it for. Sight and Sound. Okay. Uh, mainly because their target audience was based on a more educated, like, audience. And um, 
they would tend to watch films like in an art house cinema mm-hmm. or in a theatre or something like that. Um, yeah. What stance did you take in your article? Because you didn't just give a, a simple review, did you? you, you your journalistic style. Yeah, well, I think with sight and sound, the audience want a more critical analysis. Uh, well, because our film's called Reflection, obviously a big part of it was the mirror. And um, so when we'd incorporated quite creative angles of the mirror in the film, I applied this to the poster and the double page spread as well. So that's quite continuous, but also the colour scheme, we've got black and white in the film, but the only colour on the poster is a hint of blue. And in the double page spread, that's all black and white as well, yeah. so... Yeah. Anthony, tell me about your two ancillary tasks. I did the uh, poster and double page spread. Okay, and similar to, to what Natalia's done, just talk me through some of the techniques you employed on the poster, first of all. Um, well, my interpretation of the title, Reflection, was basically looking into someone's mind and stuff, mm-hmm. so I went to have like a split sort of poster where you have like one side of all the text and one side where it's like being the image with the eye and stuff. Um, so what, what I wanted to do was like just have like a contrast in terms of text and colour, which is also like the reflection idea. And then um, just having this one bit of standout colour I thought it might draw the audience in more, rather than just having it all like full blown. Like quite simple. I wanted to keep it. I didn't really have any inspiration entirely from it, but I wanted to use like mainly art house. Mm-hmm. So I did look at Black Swan posters, for example. But I was trying to create my own sort of style rather than just having one entirely off, like a real life example. Yeah, I'm just. Uh, this might be a bit of a killer question, but you know, initially you were looking at films like Identity, and I think Shutter Island featured with a lot of your. I think it was your. Oh, maybe it wasn't your group that looked at Shutter Island. I'm trying to think what was on your blogs. My question was going to be, why did you deviate from, from those film posters to create what, what you did create? And what, what the identity one I looked at I thought was simplistic, which is what, which what I wanted, but I just didn't think it, it didn't appeal to me. So I kind of went with it because the film we made was my sort of film that I'd go and watch. Yeah. So in turn, that was our audience at the same time. So I thought if I made something that appealed to me, it would appeal to our Audience. It's your it's your cultured audience yeah. that you spoke about before, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Tell me about your magazine article. Um, I mean, again, that was entirely different from what I wanted to do as well. I mean, I, I went for the top ten idea with the films. Um, it didn't it didn't really match with the house style that of our film and my poster, but I think with black and white images, it made it stand out with our film. Then you had all the other little images of the other films. Um, then it linked to the house, the sight and sound style. Um, so I thought I thought that made it look more professional, more like it would be in a magazine as opposed to making my one entirely. So I thought that that's what I went for. Yeah. yeah. What slant did you take in in your review? How did you review that film so that it looked like it was from sight and sound? Made me personal. I mean, I mean, kind of like Natalia said, it was more professional in terms of what they wanted in content. But I just gave like my own personal view. So I mean, I thought that would speak to the audience a bit more. Yeah. So what the reviewer watches the film and, and yeah. the, the reader trusts. Because I, I I suppose if it was from like I went and saw it at a film festival, so then like if the audience read it, that it'd be like as if they'd seen it at a film yeah. festival as well. So they know what to expect from it. Yeah. In terms of house style, I think you sort of answered the question a little bit. Let, but let's just go back to it. What kind of things did you make sure you were repeating from? Well, I, I definitely film? wanted like the, I mean black black and white. I mean obviously because there are filter on the film, but. Um, I just, want, I just wanted to include like the whole mix and match of in terms of having one side and the other side different things and that's, that's what I wanted rather than having colours all the same it's mainly just like the initial like design of it yeah. Are you pleased with you? Yeah I'm very happy it's a lot, lot better than I thought it would be to be honest <laughs> It's always good isn't it? <laughs> Emily moving on to you tell me about you did the poster and you did the radio did trailer the, didn't you? Yeah I did the radio trailer um, like for the poster I originally I just wanted to like because uh, obviously since it's called Reflection I wanted like it as if like Katie was like looking into the mirror and obviously it's kind of like a split personality so I was thinking if I had a big crack in the mirror it would yeah it would um, symbolize all her different personalities and but um for actual like viewing of the character I just like got a mid shot of kind of like a blank staring one like with the blank staring face and like the motionless body language it'll show like 
she's really just this very simple person. She has no true identity of her own. And obviously like, I made like the eyes pop out because the audience would, when they see the poster, they would just immediately be attracted to the eyes and think, oh my God. What do they do? You say pop out, what have you made them do? Um, they're very like blue compared to like um, the actual image. Like the photo that was taken, Katie's standing in front of a spotlight. Like, so like her face is darker, so the eyes like really pop out. And like, I think that goes really well with the theme cause, like, and the narrative. Because like her personalities are all inside her. It's very different from everything. That's good. Tell me about your radio trailer. That was hard to do. Yeah. It took like three hours to make a wow. one minute length trailer. But I think like a radio trailer, like just with words gets an audience. Like when I listen to a radio trailer, I just um, listen to the like voices that would be in the film. Like when there's like a scary moment, you just think, what's happening there it's like a shock and you want to go see the film to what's happening so um the main background music that was in our film i found like a shortened version so i put that into the background but i also put the ring a ring of roses bit at the beginning beginning of the film at the beginning of the trailer so people like instantly identify that and then obviously i put like parts of katie's voice in it that will obviously relate to the name of the film like such as look in the mirror, what do you see? And um, there's also that time time narrative that we wanted. She's I've got a saying three o'clock and then followed by the little girl's voice saying it's time to play, like knowing that it's ta that she's not gonna be herself at the moment. And obviously I've got the voiceover of me, like me asking rhetorical questions like what ha happens when you look in the mirror at someone else and everyone, I bet the audience would just think, what type of question is that? Yeah, I'm just going to ask you one question about your voiceover because that's really interesting. Your narrator is female, obviously, it's, it's your voice. That's different, isn't it, to yeah. a lot of conventional cinema and radio trailers. Why might the female voiceover work to promote your film? Because obviously, if it's a female character, people might think I'm one of the personalities, like a different personality, talking about a different personality, or maybe that I was the girl, like saying, do you want to meet all my different personalities? Like, which personality can you see? That's really interesting. That's great. Uh, I'm going to move on to Katie because you've told me a bit about her style there with um, your answer. So, Katie, talk me through your two. Um, I did a poster and an article. My poster, I looked up a lot of posters for sort of thriller films and I wanted the shock factor. I wanted to make it scary so that people would want to see it because it looks so eerie and weird. Um, the kind of minimal but they're striking and they've always got some clever twists with them. So I also looked up surreal photography because I thought it's a very, for art house cinema particularly, it's very artistic and that's what they like. So um, basing it on that audience, I found a few images of faceless sort of, like, like sort of characters. Um, so I worked with that and I went with the idea that if I could remove the mouth but keep the dimple sort of there and get rid of the nose but keep the eyes, get rid of the pupils, that if the poster was in like a, like a plastic case, which they're normally sort of viewed in, they're always in like special cases, that when the, the viewer's looking at it, their reflection will sort of merge into it. So the mid, the actual t like um, slogan, what will you see, is they're merging themselves into this creepy wow. doll-like <laughs> figure. I did it all backwards at first so that you'd have to actually look in at your reflection in the mirror with the poster to read it because I thought if it's an alternative audience that draws in the audience straight away they'll, you know, they like different weird things they'll be really impressed by that um, because it'll be on a wall a lot because they won't be able to take it to a mirror I changed it to have just the slogan and the word reflection so that it's still readable to mm. an audience but they, they would have to look to see it properly um, for my double page spread, I went with Empire Magazine. Mm -hmm. I created um, an art house section in the magazine, right. being hopeful that yeah, Empire that's would good. create <laughs> that section. Um, and I stuck with the conventions of the magazine. I mainly chose it because I knew the images, the snapshots from the film, it's in black and white. So I needed something that had a bit of colour. The main colour themes are red and orange. I just thought the, the red particularly, it really worked. and. I could really picture a review 
They write it in a really poetic, sort of metaphorical style, and it really fits to our film, the, having so many metaphors within it. So the article that I could write was just, it was just really, it really fit. It was really easy to write and use all these metaphors to describe metaphors, and it really worked <laughs> with a surreal film. Okay, I've, you've, you've kind of led me to want to ask a, another question. Um, for everybody, really, I suppose the difficulty of this is that you are making a short film and marketing a short film, and it still is something that, even though short films are becoming more and more popular, we, we don't necessarily read about them frequently or see posters for them. So how did you make it clear that you were promoting a short film? It's like, just if you kind of think of how you did it in your posters, how you did it in your trailers, your articles, how did you draw our attention and try and encourage audiences to to watch the short? Well, I described it as a short film on my poster. I, was, I said, Team Kane presents short film reflection. Um, and it was mainly the, like, the awards that I think would bring an audience in, like all the short film festival awards where it was appearing, and I think that would make them think, oh, if it's getting awards, then it must, you know, it must be fairly good. Yeah, did everyone refer yeah, to Yeah, I think recognisable like, yeah. short, short festivals as well, so obviously people would know that's a short film festival. Yeah. Like, when you introduce the awards as well, like, especially on the poster, if it's been nominated for something, I thought you kind of associate that with that film festival. So I think if you were looking at it and you recognised that film festival, you'd think, oh, short film. Absolutely. And it will appeal to your target audience as well, won't it, those recommendations? Um, I'm quite happy that I've asked you the questions that are going to, you know, that I think you've answered the questions really well. Has anyone got anything else that they want to add that they feel they haven't been able to to tell me in relation to the we combination? We can talk about the fourth wall. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. It's hard to get that question. Question six. Yeah, question question six. six. Casey, what techniques did you employ to entice and inform your audience? <laughs> we broke the fourth wall. How through. did you break it? Um, well, in the film, we have direct sort of address to the audience through staring. It like we've got the like the actor staring directly through the camera so that. It, it's personal, the questions become personal because they're said, not just to the doll, sort of cue the audience, they're, they're said openly. Um, through photography, posters, there's always direct mode of address, like, to the wall, there's no, like, safety net, there's, it's, you're straight in it. Yeah, and I think everyone's poster pretty much refers to that, I think, don't they, that, that you, you play on that technique that you are looking directly at. The question as well, like the slogan, that, that, that's asking them, so it breaks Absolutely. it down like, before they even go up to see it. So. That's super. I think you've all produced some excellent work, ancillary tasks and main tasks, absolutely superb. So, well done to all of you. Can I just say something about yeah. like the red, like what they would be on the radio? I think like if it was like my radio trailer, it would probably be more on like podcasts, like on the internet. Uh -huh. And like people would probably share it on like a social network, like say on Facebook, if there's like a specialist group of like like fans of um of a uh, of short films and like indie films it'd probably be shared on that Facebook page or if there's like I think there are Twitter accounts where like um a person who views short films and even writes short films will like sh if they think a short film is good they'll put the radio trailer on and convince people to go and see it. Yeah, that's a brilliant way of distributing a film like yours for a very niche audience. I think that that's absolutely right. Actually, I will ask you one more question just so that you don't go away thinking, oh, she didn't even ask us that. Do, do you have an idea of where your posters would be located following on from what Emily said? Um, Natalia, you laughed. <laughs> 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 Definitely cinemas, hopefully. Yeah, because it's not a mainstream film. It Like Hollywood blockbusters you see like on the side of a bus stop or something like that, or oh, an actual bus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What we were saying, like, possibly in like a theatre or like an independent cinema or something like that, would be more effective because that's where our audience more likely to cultivate, like, yeah. or view it. So. I like to think it could work on social sites as well. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think it could work on Facebook and stuff like that if it was done on the side. Yeah. Someone could easily click on it up and get work on there as well. Yeah. Modern art galleries would be good as well, like when, because sometimes they do show films within they modern do. art galleries. So and because it's art house, it would fit, and um, to have a poster, like the posters are quite artistic themselves as well. So it could work in an art gallery. Yeah, I think short film point. festivals. Yeah. Like <laughs> if someone is going to go to view a short film, like there will be posters of other short films, so like people will be convinced to go to that viewing of the short film. Super. Yeah. Fully agree with everything you've said. <laughs> Any further points? 
think overall it's worked a lot better than before. Well, I thought anyway. I think everything's mm -hmm. come together a lot more, like, a lot better than <laughs> I thought. Yeah, I, I think, before. like, the mirror shots, I never expected them to no, look so yeah, I thought you could have planned no. them. I mean, like, the one <laughs> where <laughs> you're, really. like, multiple. Yeah, they're really, I like, mean, one of you is more than enough, but... <laughs> <laughs> They're really sort of, because you, you can't, when you start when storyboard, and we couldn't storyboard that section, because we no. didn't know what the mirrors were going to see and what not yeah. see, and it was purely on the day, see what happens, and it just went really well. Yeah, there's <laughs> a wonderful worked. moment where your eyes are looking in multiple mm -hmm. directions because of the placement of the mirrors. And Again, it works with that metaphor sense. thing, like, there's yeah. loads of you, there's loads of different personalities, yeah. Yeah. it just works. It does, it does work. I showed it to someone from your target audience, an older member of your target <laughs> audience who's really into their art house films, and their words were, wow. <laughs> I thought that was just wonderful.